Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so good to be with you again at the round table together with Pastor Dennis and Pastor Rosemary and all of you faithful uh, followers of uh, Jesus, our Lord. Hi, Pamela. Everybody's ready for a good Bible study. Amen. Let's <laughs> join our hearts together and pray to the Lord. Lord, we're coming before your throne of grace and mercy to find favor in time of need today. Give us your blessing, a double, triple, and quadruple blessing for this mm -hmm. time together, as it's your word that we're learning and studying and teaching and just let the word of God sink deeply into our hearts today and let this book of Deuteronomy come alive as it has been uh, told to us, uh, probably one of the best books in the entire Bible. Give us your Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us into all truth. We commit this time into your hands in Jesus' name, in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 So the Jewish people have been reading this book for thousands of years. If it goes all the way back to the days of uh, Moses, 3,500 years ago, the greatest prophet in Israel, except for our great Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Messiah. And this, this is a... Uh, Deuteronomy is a series of three major, Pamela called them sermons, it's actually more correct to call them discourses, of uh, Moses' farewell address to Israel. He's now 120 years old, and Israel, the new generation, is about to go into the promised land, out of the wilderness wanderings, to inherit the promises that was given to Isaac, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of the promised land. And uh, in Hebrew, the name for Deuteronomy is Hadivarim, or the words, which is the first words in the beginning here, where it says, these are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel in chapter 1, verse 1, on his side of the Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain opposite, uh, and then it lists the different names. It's 11 days journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the 40th year that um, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as a commandment to them. Now I wanna bring us back up to date. I wanna like review some of the things that took place. As it says in verse 4 in chapter 1, that Sichan, the king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Cheshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, who dwelt at Ashtarot in Edri, these two great fierce kings, I think, Pamela, were they part of the uh, giants or whatever they were called the, uh, that came out of um, um, Kadesh Barnea? Where were they from originally? Uh, no, this is the, the land that they're from. Mm -hmm. They are of uh, tremendous size because uh, the Og's bed is mentioned <laughs> later on as right. being a very, very large size bed. Right, and, huge. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, it seems as if there are more than one group of people that are of large size because uh, you have them and you have them in different places. You know, for instance, Goliath uh, was over there towards the Mediterranean mm -hmm. uh, between the Central Mountain Range and the Mediterranean. And these guys are on the Eastern side of the Jordan and they are occupying land that's uh, basically the, the front mountains overlooking the big valley where the Dead Sea is, right on up to the Hermon. Uh, well, we including... left off last week, Pamela, in chapter three, excuse me, chapter two. Mm -hmm. In the end of chapter two, I'd like to like yes. 
pick up there where we left off last week. Rosemary, can you go to chapter two and read to us verses 16, through, excuse me, verses 24 through 37. That might be very good because in verse, we're, we're now leaving uh, the land, um, we're leaving Horeb and because God has said we dwelt there long enough and we're turning our journey to go to the mountains of the Amorites and all these neighboring cities. And we're gonna meet the, these two great kings uh, of the Amorites and the Moabites and the Edomites. Go ahead, Matt Rosemary, from verse 24 through 37 of chapter two, just to bring us back up to date. Rise, take your journey and cross over the river Arnon. Look, I have given you into, into your hand Zion, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and engage him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you upon the nations under the whole heaven, who shall hear the report of you and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. And I sent messengers from the wilderness of Kedemoth to Zion, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, let me pass through your land. I will keep strictly to the road, and I will turn neither to the right nor to the left. You shall sell me food for money that I may eat, and give me drink for water for money that I may drink. Only let me pass through on foot just as the descendants of Esau who dwell in Zeor and the Moabites who dwell in Ar did for me until I cross the Jordan to the land which the Lord our God is given us. But Zion, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass through for the Lord your God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate that he might deliver him into your hand as it is this day. And the Lord said to me, see, I have begun to give Zion and his land over to you. Begin to possess it, that you may inherit his land. Then Zion and all his people came out against us to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him over to us. So we defeated him, his sons and all his people. We took all his cities at that time and we utterly destroyed the men, women, and little ones of every city. We left none remaining. We took only the livestock as plunder for ourselves and the spoil of the cities which we took. From Aroa, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, and from the city that is in the ravine, as far as Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us, the Lord our God delivered all to us. Only you did not go near the land of the people of Ammon, anywhere along the river Jabbok, or to the cities of the mountains, or wherever the Lord our God had forbidden us. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. So Moses is remembering and telling the children of Israel about the nations that they encountered on the way to Canaan, to the promised land, and going through the land of the Amorites, they come across this king of the Amorites, the king of Cheshbon, Sichon, the Amorite, the king of Cheshbon and his land. And so I still think he was a vicious king. He must have been, you said he was quite large, didn't you, Pamela? Well, I was talking about Og, but Sihon also had to have been a, a large man. And uh, I think another thing about these two kings was that they were kind of leaders in the area. That's uh, maybe one of the reasons why God was focused on them in terms of um, conquering them uh, first, because they somehow they had power um, that the other groups didn't have so much and that would have then built the reputation of the Israelites into a sort of fierce fighting people. So read to us in chapter 3 and verses 1 and 2 okay to get us okay uh, 
where, where Moses is remembering uh, the battle against Bashan. We, Og, Og, the king of Bashan. Og, king of Bashan. Uh, we made our way up the road towards Bashan, and King Og of Bashan, with all his men, took the field against us at Edrei. But the Lord said to me, do not fear him, for I am delivering him and all his men and his country into your power, and you will do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites who lived in Heshbon. Yes. And let's get, this, let's just, you know, unpack that. Do not fear him, for I have delivered him and all his people and his land into your hand. In other words, God is fighting for, with the, uh, for, for, in, uh, for, with the new generation of Joshua and Caleb and the, uh, let's say the, the new generation of, of Israel that was born in the wilderness journey, correct? Right. They, first of all, this new generation has no memory of Egypt. Mm. They only have memory of the desert. And so they're tough. You know, they're desert uh, nomadic uh, people. So they're, they're toughened up. And uh, they also have uh, Joshua, who is kind of in the background there. Uh, in, in this whole uh, story that Moses is uh, relating, somehow Joshua is right there because he was, uh, if you go back to Exodus 24, Joshua was the servant of Moses. So he's yes. like his right-hand man. So that personality is right there uh, when he's recalling the whole story. So you see these, these, uh, this whole new generation is very encouraged. And when it says that God is going to take these people, he's going to take Og and he's going to take his people and he's going to give the land over, they have the confidence. They don't, they don't fall back on some other mentality Yes, uh, that that yes. the uh, former generation had. They're not. They're not afraid like the former generation. No. Uh, they 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 are. They are believing God, and they enter the battle with full faith. Go ahead, Dennis. Move on to chapter three and verses three through eleven, where it says, "So the Lord our God." So the Lord our God also delivered into our hands Og, king of Besham with his people and we attacked him until he had no survivors remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we did not take from them. 60 cities, all the region of Argob, the king of Og in Basham. All these cities were fortified with high walls, gates and bars besides a great many rural towns. And we utterly destroyed them as we did to Sion, king of Heshbon utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. But all the livestock and the spoil of the cities we took as booty for ourselves. And at that time, we took the land from the hand of the two kings of the Amorites, who were on the side of the Jordan, from the river Arnon to Mount Hermon. The Sidonians called Hermon Sirion, and the Amorites called it Sina. All the cities of the plain of Gilead and Basham as far as, far as uh, Salka and Edre, cities of, it king, sorry, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Uh -huh. Indeed, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. It is not in Rabbah of the people of Ammon. Nine cubits is its length and four cubits is width, according to standard cubit. Here we go. Okay, so which is nine, eighteen foot nine inches? <laughs> pretty big, pretty big bed. He must have been a pretty uh, huge. Eighteen bed. feet, eighteen feet nine inches. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow. So, nevertheless, the, the Lord delivered the uh, Og, the king of Bashan, into the hands of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. and they took all his cities at that time, sixty cities. Mm -hmm. And this gave Israel a whole lot of ter uh, uh, territory to occupy, so to speak, mm -hmm. on the east side of the Jordan River. Mm 
So this, oh uh, this so this territory of Bashan to help make it clear for everybody is today the Golan Heights. Ah, excellent, Pamela. That's where it yeah. was, all and the way up north. It's really part of the promised land. God promised that to Israel. So it wasn't that they were taking something, um, you know, strange and foreign. They were actually taking land promised to them, and God made the way. God did it for them. I remember you telling us that as a group when we went up to go and <laughs> let's all come back here. Yes. <laughs> Rosemary, continue reading uh, in verses 12 through 17 so that we can bring this together here. And this land which we possessed at that time from Aurora, which is by the river Arnon, and half the mountains of Gilead and its cities, I gave to the Reubenites and the Gadites, the rest of Gilead, and all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, I gave to half the tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob with all Bashan was called the land of the giant. Jer, the son of Manasseh, took all the region of Argob as far as the border of the Geshurites and the Machahites and called Bashan after his own name, Havoth Jer to this day. Also, I gave Gilead to Maka and to the Reubenites and the Gadites. I gave them from Gilead as far as the river Arnon, the middle of the river as the border, as far as the river Jabbok, the border of the people of Ammon, the plain also with the Jordan as the border, uh, from Chinnereth as far as the east side of the Sea of the Araba, the salt sea below the slopes of Fisca. Yes. So again, here we have Moses remembering and telling the children of Israel about the tribes that settled on that side of the Jordan. My goodness. Um, and this yes. is this is this is to fulfill what the Lord had spoken of right from the very beginning, where He said. Um, that he killed, or yes, after he gave, had killed Sichan, king of the Amorites. I'm in chapter one and verse four, who dwelt in Cheshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who dwelt in Ashtarot in Edri. And on this side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law to them. So, you know, here Moses is now 120 years old. He spent 40 years in Egypt with Pharaoh as a prince of Egypt. He spent 40 years uh, as a, I guess, a shepherd, shepherding the sheep and the flock. And then he spent the last 40 years of his life with the children of Israel. And now he's bringing is to a finale. He's, he's giving them this, his final uh, exhortations, his final uh, discourses. It's just extraordinary to just follow this through and enter. I want you to enter into the whole heartbeat of Moses in this, this lesson. Let's continue in the next, uh, what are the next verses? 18 through 20, 18. Pamela? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you read those? Sure. At that time, I charged you saying, the Lord your God has given you this country to possess. You must go as shock troops, warriors all at the head of your Israelite kinsmen. Only your wives, children, and livestock, I know that you have much livestock, shall be left in the towns I have assigned to you until the Lord has granted your kinsmen a haven such as you have, and they too have taken possession of the land that the Lord your God is assigning to them beyond the Jordan. Then you may return each to his homestead that I have assigned to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they were, uh, they especially had livestock, which meant they were um, uh, cattle. Well, cattle to them were sheep, goats, and um, cows and bulls. 
so uh, you know they were ranchers. <laughs> they were ranchers. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> and that and that land is especially good for for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and even today, um, we are grow the best uh, beef cattle up on the Golan Heights. Wow. Yes. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Next is in verses 21 and 22, and here I'm going to read it. And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Your eyes have seen all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. So will the Lord do to all the kingdoms through which you pass. You must not fear them, for the Lord your God himself fights for you. Mm. And that's a very encouraging word for all of us. He commanded Joshua at that time, a huge, big job for Joshua to take on. And uh, he's not sending Moses in to do this. He's sending Joshua into the land where he wouldn't even be, he doesn't know what he's gonna be facing in the land of uh, Canaan, the promised land. He's not gonna be welcomed there. And he'd have to fight to possess what God's gonna give him there. And he's going to lead the children of Israel into the land of uh, 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 into the promised land without any fear. God himself is fighting for you, he says. This is a huge challenge, don't you think? Yep. Joshua, yes. Caleb, they're not worried about it. Sichon has been killed. Og has been killed. And God is faithful to bring his promises to pass, Rosemary, as you always say. Amen? Mm -hmm. Read that to us, Rosemary, in verses 23 through 29, where Moses remembers these uh, promises concerning the promised land. Then I pleaded with the Lord at that time, saying, O oh Lord God, of you have begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand for what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do anything like your works and your mighty deeds. I pray, let me cross over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, those pleasant mountains of and Lebanon. But the Lord was angry with me on your account and would not listen to me. So the Lord said to me, enough of that. Speak no more to me of this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and lift your eyes toward the west, the north, the south, and the east. Behold, it was your eyes, for you shall not cross over this Jordan. But command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you will see. So we stayed in the valley opposite Beth Peor. Oh, my, my, my. This is something we're really going to have to sink our teeth into. This is and a heartbreak, actually. This yeah. is a heartbreaking yeah. moment. It's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. He's pleading with the Lord to cross over and to see the promised land. And God says, no. What do you think of that, Dennis? What if God said no to you about something that was very, you had been working for uh, all your life, you had been waiting for it, you had been praying for it, you had been, it, and he said no. What, what, what does any of us have to say when God says no and doesn't do what we're praying for? Well, I, I'm sure that if my heart was set on something and I've lived towards that end and all of a sudden I, I, <laughs> I want to go into what I lived towards what, what I oh. thought was promised to all of us and then God said no uh, I guess I would <laughs> I'd be have heartbroken. To, I would have to accept I'd be heartbroken I'd have to accept um, what he said but I know that I'd be in a place of discouragement mm. yeah uh, and, and I think that's that's the that's one thing but then, if he then told me to go and encourage someone to go in, that would be even worse. <laughs> so, I mean, I, then I, then I, I mean, I wouldn't have a debate on him saying, no, I can't go in. But 
But I mean, I'd really be, <laughs> I don't know what's beyond discouragement, but if he told me to go and encourage Joshua to go in, <laughs> then that's another story. Well, and go. that's God, isn't it? That's God. Yeah. He's sovereign. But it, it, it says, it, it, it says, um, but charge Joshua, command Joshua, and encourage him, and strengthen him. <laughs> <laughs> From, from our position of discouragement and weakness, God's saying, go and come, uh, charge Joshua, encourage him, and strengthen him. Mm. Wow. Mm. Uh, that's my two penny worth, but I think it's worth more than two pennies. Yes, it is. That's a lot there, because that's the reality of life, isn't it? When the exchange is coming, after all those years. Mm. <laughs> But I also think what's, what's also beautiful, he couldn't go in because God does not go against his word. God told him before he would not enter in because he disobeyed. But what I do think is really wonderful is that God says, I'll show you. And he took him to a vantage point and he shows him the various directions. So he has a good look, although he cannot go in. And God, God got quite irritated annoyed with him for, for pleading but you could understand him pleading because now is it's gonna be the it, all he saw in the wheels all the experiences with all the miracles and all that is it's nothing as far as Moses is concerned to compare with what God's gonna do for them in giving them the land it, he and he wants to be there so we can understand that but God doesn't if God says something he means what he says so there's no pleading, debating, changing God's mind, not in this instance, God said he could not enter in. But I think it's so wonderful that with God, there's always this, there's always, there's always this mercy. Even what he says may seem harsh at the time, but he has this, God has this remarkable way of softening the blow. <laughs> Even though he speaks firm and you know he's not gonna change his mind, he's, there's still there's this, this thing about God which, which makes me love him more and more. He's, he's, he's so gracious. And he says to Moses, go up on the mountain. And, and he shows, he does a vantage point, and he shows him the land. Mm. I think that's, that's, uh, that's quite something that could even be more even heartbreaking. <laughs> to, because he's, he's come right to the threshold. He's come right to the actual point to... Uh, uh, and this is all really because of what he happened at Maribor, isn't it? This is this yeah. is all because of that one slip up. That's when exactly was, right, Dennis. When, let's he, when, turn, he was, when you let's think turn, about let's it, let's turn to that. Let Dennis, let's turn to that in Maribor and uh, take a look at it. I think it's in Numbers chapter twenty. Okay. Because it's, it all comes about because he doesn't. He's only meant to speak to the rock, and that was Christ Jesus. So it's so serious. Read the verses 1 through 13 to us. Uh, Numbers chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. You can read it. Uh, this was the one, one mistake that Moses made in his yeah. amazing two, last 40 Numbers years of his long one uh, career or life and ministry. Okay. Mm. 1 to 13. 1 through 13. Okay, this has asked me to read it. Yes, uh, Then the children of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses and Aaron, and the people contended with Moses and, speak, and spoke, saying, If only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our animals should die here? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and they fell on their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together, speak to the rock before their eyes 
and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water to them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. And he said to them, here now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? And then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. And water came out abundantly and the congregation and their animals drank. And so, and so with that, that's why I brought that up was because it says clearly, you know, that, that Moses, see, we, when we get to where we are in Deuteronomy and we're reflecting back, we see it's like God speaking harshly to him to say that he, can't, they, he cannot go into the promised land. Uh, but he had spoke very harshly to the people of Israel. And, and he also too, because God had told him to, him and Aaron. So Aaron didn't say, oh, Moses, you're wrong. Uh, not we, but he says, when Moses says, must we, <laughs> that's mm. saying that we are the suppliers. We are the one, right. we're the right. one that's, so, you know, must we get water for yours if that, like we're the ones that supply it. And before that we get to this point where Moses is going to not get into the promised land, Aaron is also uh, dealt with too. So God took that very, very seriously because they were very harsh. Uh, and not only that, but of course, the rock is Jesus. So that's almost like defacing when he smoked the rock. Yeah, verse 12 gives a clear explanation. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me mm. to hollow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Mm. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Mm. So Moses knew from that point onwards, he was not going in. Yes, exactly. Mm. And the, and the emphasis was that, of course, he smoked the rock, but the, the real, the real thing was he didn't hallow, hallow, the name of the Lord. That's right, because you did not believe me to hallow. Hallow means to sanctify the Lord. Sanctify, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of Israel. Mm. It's the same words that Jesus taught us when he prayed the Lord's prayer. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Mm. Oh, Father sanctify in heaven, your sanctify name. your holy name. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm. And of course, Moses must have been, uh, I mean, Moses didn't strike the rock. Uh, you know, he, he, he didn't, he must have, he must have just, it's the only thing he's ever, ever did that he didn't uh, do right. He's been, he's been like par excellence his whole entire 40 years with them. Mm -hmm. And this is the, this was the Lord's will, of course. Mm -hmm. My goodness. And you know, it's, it's amazing because when you think about, I've always thought about that, but you know, that Aaron, he could have checked Moses for like his rash, impatient behavior. That mm -hmm. that may have brought something for both of them. But if two agree, he was in, <laughs> he was like in agreement. So he, sometimes we can know what's, what's right, but we keep silent, but we become a silent partner. Just, that's a, sort, a sense of agreement. Um, and I, you, you think sometimes what would have happened, even though Moses done that, if, um, if Aaron had sort of checked him, and, and try to say to Moses, that's wrong, you're doing, you're, that's impulse. Maybe they could have both repented. They would, yes, they would have had they would have to been, have repented publicly yeah, for the people. Yeah, but you, we don't actually see Moses repenting of it, do we? No. That's the thing. No. Mm. But it's also, you, you notice, it's, it's very dangerous to become people focused mm. because all the time Moses was God focused, mm. it was always about doing what God says, obeying God and God looking right in the eyes of people, you know, God, God seemed to be, to be doing right. Mm. And so even when God gets angry with the people, Moses comes in and he, he says, you can't do this. You can't do it. What will the other nations say? Mm. 
Um, but now is the one time where he becomes people focused. He just got so upset with the people. It made him lose sight of God, God's purpose, God's, God's name being hallowed. He, and he even calls people rebels. <laughs> and so we have, to, we have to always ask God to help us to, to, be, to be always conscious of him and his will and his purpose <laughs> and not <laughs> to be distracted by people's ways, people's bad behavior because if you ever get caught up in that you can lose your promise sure that's what uh happened with aaron and the golden calf right yeah. you know just uh be you know before the golden calf they were up on the mountain in this sort of um plateau the 70 elders and they had this great vision and they were eating and drinking in the presence of the lord mm. and then moses goes up into the cloud Mm. And uh, this is in Exodus 24. Mm. And uh, he tells them, the elders and Aaron and Avihu and Nadav, wait here for me uh, until I return. Mm. What did they do? They didn't wait for him. They went down to the camp and they got all embroiled mm. in the people. Yes. Yeah. And so Aaron had that tendency anyway. And mm. you see it again here that he's complying he's not uh stopping moses even though they had just been in the tent of meeting and god yeah. said speak mm. to the rock you know take the rod and speak to the rock but don't mm. you know he didn't say strike it mm. but it's so, amazing it's yeah. quite incredible because last week on our in our bible study it seemed it was like the reverse because last week remember we knew that israel had sinned but we, we, we honed in and uh, focused on the fact that they didn't go into the promised land, all those who died, because of unbelief. Right. But now, today, when we're looking at this, it's the reverse. It's unbelief that put them into the place of sin. <laughs> so uh, that's quite a, a serious thing because they, they were, I mean, when Moses' words are so harsh, must we get... Right water for you rebels i mean it's, it's, so he had them condemned already and so when you really look at it it's, it's very very powerful but they went from the place of, because god told them to do it he he, he didn't unbelief he, he just chose to take it upon himself mm -hmm. and so it was unbelief that stopped those others from going to the promised land and it's unbelief that disqualified Moses from coming to the promised land. Right. It wasn't Aaron, sin because they all had sinned. Yeah, Aaron too. Well, because he yeah. died. He died, yeah. died along the way. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. It's interesting how Joshua's always in the background. Yes. Until God brings him to the foreground. Mm. So he doesn't get involved in any of this. Mm. Mm. God's preparing him all these years. He's, he's watching what's going on. He's observing it all. Mm. But, but God's preparing him to become the one who will take them in. Right. He and he's had faith all the time. Right. He's believed from the, from the get-go. No matter what's going on, Josh has maintained his confidence, wholehearted confidence in God. We're going in. We're able to go in. He never, he never gets mixed up in the rubbish. Right. So that's the key. As you say, getting mixed up with the rubbish is getting so entangled uh, with the whole idea of what are people going to think if mm. I make this decision mm. or if I do this, mm. that we really have to focus on how do we obey God mm -hmm. uh, in all ma mm. all matters, even the smallest of things? Well, that's what's going to be taking place now in chapter four, Pamela, because this is still part of the first discourse of Moses mm -hmm. to the children of Israel. And he, in, the, in this particular part that we just read, um, in the end of chapter three, mm -hmm. command Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him 
for he shall go over before this people and he shall cause them to inherit the land which you will see. And then in chapter four, I'm going to be reading from verse uh, one through eight. Now, oh, this is God's commandment of obedience here, his call to obey his judgments and his statutes. Now, O oh Israel, listen to, the, listen to the statutes and the judgments, which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that it may keep the commandments, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor, uh, for the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all the men who, follow, who followed Baal of Peor. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. Surely I have taught you the statutes and judgments just as the Lord my God commanded me that you should act accordingly according to them in the land that which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, surely, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. But what nation, what great nation is there that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us for whatever reason we may call upon him? And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law which I set before you this day? Mm. My, oh my. My, my, my. Mm. That's, uh, that's something. Mm. This is really something, Dennis. It really is. Moses is reminding the children of Israel that despite all their rebellious, mm. uh, their rebellion against God mm. in the wilderness, mm. now they're getting ready to enter into the promised land. He wants them to be obedient to him. He wants them to be uh, uh, obedient even because of all of the rebellion that took place in the wilderness. They've learned now, and it's time to move on and to enter into the promised land and the promises. And can you imagine, can you imagine that these words are coming from someone who has just realized that they cannot go into that which was a promise? because mm. of disobedience C can you imagine now he, in, in in the new translations in, in in my new king james it says listen but i love the old king james where it says and it's a, i think it's your hebrew word which is shama which means it says hearken hearken mm. so can you imagine you can even hear something in the old king james hearken and he says in verse one he says hearken to hear uh, be obedient to regard. So he's saying, hark, and he knows the price, the great price that you'll pay for not listening, for not being obedient. And then, in, and then in verse two, he says, you should not add to the, to a word, which I command you. He knew that when God commanded him to speak to the rock, he added to that and look what it cost him. So you, mm -hmm. you can, these are not just words. This, this man speaking from a place of experience. And he, he knew that the, 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 the consequence of disobedience. He said, keep my statutes and my judgments. That was verse five and six I read. And he said, only take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget what you have seen and your heart depart from them. That's down in verse nine. Oh Lord. I, I, I do, I've never, until this point, really put the two together. But just that word, hearken, listen. And then and Shemal picked it up. He was 120 years, gone all through that, not to get into the promised land. Oof. That's serious. Oh, it's interesting uh, in verse 9 where uh, it, you uh, referred it. 
In Hebrew, it's shmor nafshecha. Mm. Uh, watch over your soul. Dear God. <laughs> yeah. So uh, up in up in verse one of chapter four, it's uh, the word hearken. You mm. mention it. It's shma. Shma. That means hear. Mm. Gonna, we're going to hear it uh, repeated throughout mm. the, these chapters of Deuteronomy. Mm. And then there is the word which is to come in and, and take the land and, and settle in the land, which is actually to inherit the land. Wow. Um, uh, Yoresh. Right. And then, so uh, you have to listen to the Lord. Mm. You come in, you inherit the land. But you have to watch over your soul. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Mm. So hearing and obeying the the, the, the word of the mm. Lord was Israel's very life. Mm. Yes, it was their life. If they disobeyed, it was mm. death. Mm. Right. So he was he was he was showing mm. them how to have life. Mm. It's the same for us today. Mm. Doing what God says, obeying His word, and living according to it is 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 our very life. Jesus is that word. He is that life in us. Isn't it amazing? Because that I never seen that before. Pamela, until you took up, made the difference, uh, distinguish the difference between one and, and nine. Because when it says to only take heed to to thyself and keep thy soul, it says in the King James diligently, mm -hmm. lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. All the senses have to be exercised. Because mm -hmm. the soul consists of the mind, the intellect, the will, the emotions. It's all the senses here. So even though we know or we've been told the truth, it has to be imparted from the spirit into the soul. Um, that, that's something I have to go away and really look at. Uh, but and then it's, it's mm. explained here I, in in my tra translation. Of course, I'm looking at the Hebrew too. Mm -hmm. It says that. Uh, do not forget, get, pen uh, don't forget, et mm advarim, -hmm. the, these things, mm -hmm. which asher ra'u enecha, which your eyes have seen. Whoa. And then it says, so that they may not fade from your mind. Wow. Mm -hmm. As long as you shall live. Hmm. So there is this act that must they must do all the time, which is remember, remember, remember. Don't yes. let it fade yes. from your yes. mind. And, 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 and they're saying, and as you remember, the, the end of the verse says, rehearse it before your children exactly. so that they will remember. <laughs> exactly. And teach it to your children and mm. your grandchildren, mm. especially concerning the day that you stood before the Lord your God oh. in Corinth or on Mount Sinai, when the Lord said to me, gather the people together mm -hmm. to me and I will let them hear it is, hear my mm -hmm. voice. Mm -hmm. They may learn to fear me all the days of oh, my life oh, 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 oh. and live on the earth mm -hmm. and that they may teach their children. What and isn't and don't you think that's the primary purpose of hearing the word of God right through the ages that that's we might it. fear yeah. fear the that's Lord yes. <laughs> and to that's, teach it to your children? Yeah, that's the children. that's the primary purpose, isn't it, for us hearing right. the word of God? That's right. Um, because of the day that they stood before the Lord on Mount or, uh, mm. Sinai. Mm. Incredible. Incredible. Well, this has been a very ex awesome uh, and yes. What should I say? very fruitful time together mm. rosemary we're drawing closer to the end of the hour and i know that some people have to be leaving us mm. so would you like to close in prayer and thank everybody for showing up today and excuse us from being a little bit um jittery with our computers <laughs> i was i was uh, unable even to get online until the last moment but i'm thankful that we were able to be together Amen. next week we'll continue listening to moses in the last uh, days of his life and also in the last chapters of uh, this book is going to be just fabulous I i'm really getting mm -hmm. excited about reading and studying and learning from deuteronomy mm -hmm. this is the call to obedience that we're enter entering into mm -hmm. in this last uh, few work verses 
Rosemary, lead us into a closing prayer, please, my dear. Lord, we want to thank you so much for this precious time we spent together. As we've come together as your people, your children, as it were, sit at your feet. And as we've gone back to look back and to remember, as we've followed the words of Moses, as the transition is being made, he's going off the scene and, and the people are going to go into the land. We want to thank you for the provisions that you make for us. Lord, you brought about here a new generation of people that just only know how to trust you and have confidence in your word and to obey what you're saying. And as we've seen here, Lord, you took this new generation, you're preparing them, you're, you're giving them a taste of real war, and you've seen how quickly you're fighting, they've seen how quickly you're fighting their battles for us. And you're showing us through this word that you fight for us. We don't have to fight for ourselves. As you conquered those great kings and they possessed the land and, and those two and a half tribes were given the, that fertile land, that land for their cattle to raise. You gave them the cities. The cities were strong. You, you caused them to enter and possess. Mm. And they were able even to, the fighters, the warriors, to protect, to build, establish the cities, and then to leave their loved ones there and continue the journey. But they're crossing over. They're going over mm. into this new land. There's a crossing over for us, Lord. Yeah. You're taking us into this new place. As we look mm. back and see all the failures and all the mistakes, we've come to a place of learning, of understanding oh. who you are, and to, to, to take your word mm. and to grab hold hold of that word and not let it go and to obey that word and to trust it mm. and to act upon it and to, to put, apply it to our hearts, our minds and to pass it on to our children and grandchildren, Lord. You're bringing us to a broad place, a bigger place and yes, there are many Lord. giants there and there's enemies there, but Lord, you are fighting for yes. us and we're going through difficult times even now, but if we look back over the last two years, we can see you have been fighting yes. for us and you brought us to this place a, be a much better a place than where we were before mm -hmm. you're fighting for us and Bless so you. lord we're so excited Bless about you. what you're going to show us and continue to show mm -hmm. us as we travel through deuteronomy this is your divine plan yes, and we thank you so much for shamul yes, and lord. for pamela mm -hmm. and for all of those who've taken this time oh, off this hour off to, mm -hmm. to just get into your word to eat your word thank for jermaine and, and for clint yes, who, lord. who are facilitating this that so we can have this and be made Super possible on zoom lord let your anointing be upon us Lama. all and may at the end of this we be mm -hmm. totally transformed renewed in our spirit in our mind yes and lord ready to go up and possess our inheritance yes. amen. amen and amen amen amen, amen. 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 blessings oh wow amen hallelujah <laughs> Well, we're not just going to see the promised land. We're going in in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> just unmute everyone and say hello and shalom, goodbye to brothers Pamela. and sisters. Amen. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.